In English, as you see up above, we have an idiom. We have an idiom that is, a picture is worth a thousand words. I've chosen an image. This image comes to us courtesy of Valentin Salja, who is, uh, I believe, a Serbian photographer. Um, from the description of the picture, I can see that the picture is or was taken in Serbia, and it was taken inside Tara National Park, and it's from a place called Mokra Hora, um, which, uh, from my knowledge of Czech, means wet mountain. We're going to try it this way because I don't want to be typing the whole time. Number one, because I'm a pretty poor typer, uh, typist. It also might add a little bit of interest to the whole situation. I'm going to turn on the AI, which should automatically transcribe what we're doing here in the, de the describing of this picture. For anybody out there, feel free. Please do jump in, comment, contribute. Let's get the AI rolling. So what we see here, um, just working with a general description, we'll start in the foreground and then work our way successively back into the picture. Again, thanks uh, to Unsplash and Valentin Salia. As I said, after sunset, but maybe before true, true night. What you can see here on the left side, we've got a few bushes as the car and the road start to curve off to the left. Um, on the right side, we also see some trees, some nice leafy trees. Um, we, those are technically deciduous trees. But then up in the background, we have other trees that look like a pine or a fir type of tree. And those would be coniferous trees because they um, produce cones and that's how they make seeds and propagate. The road itself seems to be paved. It seems to be blacktop or you could say asphalt or tarmac. And it seems to be very smooth, not such a rough surface. And it appears that it has rained recently because you can see the reflection of the taillights of the car reflected in the water on the pavement. And <clears throat> the road itself is quite black, which I, is why I think it, that it's blacktop and not um, just a gravel road. However, the shoulder of the road over here at the edge does appear to be a sort of fine gravel uh, made of very small rocks and sand. And the car itself, the car is a five-door five hatchback, um, maybe an Opel Astra or something to that effect. And it has pulled over, it has pulled over onto the shoulder of the road. And because the brake lights are shining, which we can see the reflection of here in the wet pavement, but also the third light here, which is actually a brake light, is also shining that means that the car well maybe it's not completely in gear however the car has not they have not pulled the emergency brake or the parking brake and it implies that the car um, and well its passengers have stopped at least momentarily they might decide to continue driving up the road however we don't know um, but that third light, as I was saying, does indicate that the driver is still stepping on the brake pedal. And so they've not made any complete decision whether they are, have stopped or they are going to continue driving. Um, as I said, beyond the deciduous trees and then the coniferous trees, we can see that it is dark. It is nighttime. Um, the trees themselves are being lit up by some sort of large lights. Um, some people call them Klieg lights. Um, I don't know if that is a brand name, but uh, typically I would call them floodlights. And it's because these sort of lights are intended, instead of a spotlight, which highlights one specific spot, these will flood an area with light. And so, yeah, we could say that the foreground um, not the immediate foreground, but the general foreground is flooded with light. It is awash in light. The bushes and trees next to the road 
are bathed in light, and it's a bright whitish sort of light. Um, it doesn't have that orangey sort of color like a like a sodium light would produce. It seems more like a halogen or something. But then also looking into the distance beyond the tallest trees, as you can see, it's dark. And there seems to be some sort of mist or clouds. Um, perhaps it is overcast because, as I said, from the road, you can tell that it's wet. And um, it has probably rained. Although the shoulder still looks a bit dry, so I don't think that it rained a lot. It was probably just a bit of a mist or a sprinkle, enough to make the road wet. However, yes, um, it's cloudy or misty and a bit overcast. And the, the clouds themselves seem to be picking up a bit more of ambient light in a way, which leads me to believe, it's just me making a guess, making some sort of assumption here, is that although the road is curving to the left, then it probably curves back to the right. And behind those trees, there is some other, some other additional source of light, which is then reflecting off of the clouds and back down. And so it adds a really nice kind of mysterious or eerie sort of feeling to it. Um, wow, eerie. Uh, it, Funny, it's spelled eerie like Lake Erie from the Great Lakes in North America. But I meant eerie, E-E-R-I-E, -E -E, which means mysterious, kind of spooky. Um, now, I'm just kind of glancing up here at the text, and it's interesting. Um, it seems to be remarkably accurate. However, it still does make some mistakes. Um, <clears throat> however, by the way, so to me, the car has come around a curve, and I believe if the road continues, it'll curve back to the right, and there'll be another source of light further back beyond those trees. Um, yeah. Now, the question is, what is the source of light off to the left? What is illuminating or lighting up all of this? Is it floodlights, and is this a photograph that's just staged or put together, assembled by the photographer, by Valentin, or is there some thing, some building that lies off to the left side of the road? Now, in my imagination, um, it's some sort of little general store or maybe a little pub or something like that. Um, I don't, but the light is so bright and pure white, it does seem more like halogen lamps, which most businesses don't have on them. Um, and so maybe it could be some sort of, uh, it could be, it could be a set for a music video. Uh, maybe this is a guy out delivering pizza. Now there is no pizza delivery sign here, but he was delivering pizza to the, um, to the, the set for what did the Fox say music video, because it seems kind of like that sort of forest. Um, I don't know. That's what I have for a general description of it. Now, as for my other impression or my personal viewpoint on the picture itself, I quite like it because I absolutely love nature and spending time out in nature. And I am envious of whoever is in that car um, because with the darkness and the sort of misty skies, and then you can see the wet road, as we said, it has recently rained or something, I can put myself in their shoes or in their seat. And I, I imagine that if I rolled the windows down on the car, this, I can just smell the fresh, cool dampness of the forest. Um, as I said, because of the name of the national park, uh, Mokra Gora, it means wet mountain. And so it's probably quite cool being at a higher elevation. And I can, I mean, I, I can almost get goosebumps on my skin thinking about the smell of the air in that environment. But um, let's see, now let's try and, let's come up with a story for this picture. Um, what could be going on here? Now, I've been in this position before, and what I, this is just my imagination. Um, 
feel free and uh, chime in anybody in the comments. Now, your the comments are over here, but my monitor is over there, so I'm looking that way, but I point that way. Um, what I imagine when I first pulled this picture off of Unsplash, um, aside from just the visual aspect, the vibrant greens and then the the silver and red focal point in the middle, and the fact that yeah, I could just I could smell the air. That's what drew me to it, but. What I first imagined, um, it's a national park, and so it's a young couple, uh, maybe, maybe two couples, and they're on a road trip. It's summer holiday, but because they're up in the mountains, it's cool, and um, it's kind of dark, maybe a bit damp. And in this area, there's a lot of um, creeks and waterfalls that go through the valleys, through the forest, and these, these we'll say two couples, four friends, They'd been driving and they found it a magical, magical spot. And they decided to take a little hike through the mountains to explore, maybe find one of those mystical waterfalls. And um, they, then they decided to have stay and cook their dinner there. And so they pulled out um, their food from the back of the car and they put it on the picnic table and they had their dinner and things. But then they realized it was getting late and they still needed to get to their final destination for the day. And so they got into the car and started driving up the road. Now, I can imagine maybe uh, the driver was a little bit tense because he, he didn't really want to drive in the dark and he had wanted to get started earlier because he's driving on a windy, curvy road through the dark. There's bushes on both sides of the road, so he doesn't have... Uh, so much visibility and he's a little stressed because maybe little animals might run in front of the car. Um, and suddenly, as they're coming up and they're starting to round this curve and they see the lights ahead of them, um, what could it be? And they're in the car wondering. And as they're getting past that bush, on the left, whatever it is to the left catches their view. And they pull over to the side of the road, stop on the shoulder, and they assess the situation. And what is it? It's a small store slash maybe um, pub or something along those lines. And of course, the, I can imagine the driver, he's a little bit stressed out. He's not in the position where he really wants to be. And so he, would, he and the other guy, they want to go in and grab a couple beers. However, then, of course, because they're driving on a windy road through the dark and they're on holiday and you shouldn't drink and drive, um, yeah, the, some of the other occupants of the car are saying, no, 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 we're not stopping here. But they're pretty adamant. And either way, it's a bit tense and they're still just pause on the side of the road. His foot is still on the brake pedal. That's why you can see that third light up top there, indicating that his foot's still on the brake pedal and they've not decided whether to continue driving or then park on the left side in front of the little store slash pub type of thing. And that brings us to what's going on in the picture, what we see. But the real question is who's taking the photo? Who, from whose perspective is this actually the situation actually unfolding? Who could it be? Back here, lurking in the darkness, watching them. Obviously, they, whoever it is, has also stopped and they're just observing the car up there. And so my idea is that the last place that they had stopped, where they had their dinner, and they just had some laughs and some snacks and uh, they were hanging out. There was somebody else off hiding in the bushes, watching them, just watching them, waiting for them. And now he's following them and stalking them, waiting for them to make their next move. But what is their intention? Is it a psycho killer? Somebody wait, 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 that's going to murder them? Or is it just kind of somebody watching. I don't really know. Um, and I guess we never really, I guess we never really will know. The only person who can actually tell us the truth behind what's going on in this photograph, the only person who truly holds the answers, who holds the key to this mystery is 
Valentin Salia. And so I'm going to contact him and uh, find out. Um, hopefully they were not murdered, but if he uploaded the photo, then obviously um, he got home safe and sound. And I would like to know a little bit more about that. John Gulp. <laughs> Burn wow, there's somebody else in here. That's so nice. Um, you got Nihon, Zdenyek, always Zdenyek, and Berna. Welcome, Berna. I normally see you in the morning. Now I get to see you in the evening. But yeah, that's what I, this is what I stumbled upon. I'm going to try and um, shake it up and have something a little bit different every time. However, that's, that's the thing, you know, that's, that's, hence the idiom, a picture is worth a thousand words. Everyone just kind of, oh yeah, it's nice, cool, smiley, whatever. And really just by pushing a little bit more, we can have some, we, I think we can have a lot of fun with this and we can uh, really come up with some fun stories and characters and things like that. Um, and I hope to get your contributions as well. But um, right now it's nearly eight o'clock in Barcelona, which means we can freely walk the streets. And so we're gonna go take advantage of that. And so that was the inaugural episode. Dun, dun! Thank you for joining in, anybody. Thank you, Berna. Thank you, Nihan. Thank you, Zdenyak. And I hope to see um, more people out there and more people participating. And any sort of other ideas for English otherwise, I am all ears and I'm uh, open to suggestion because really sometimes the best ideas come from the people on the outside, not here on the inside. Though I do have a lot of voices on the inside. Have a nice night and see you at 8 a.m. for breaking down the news. Don't forget your coffee. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.